Vivian, uh, again, I think it's best for you to introduce yourself as well as, uh, but I will say one of the reasons we, I, we love to have you in this mix is your understanding of AI and also some of the themes that would emerge from that, but go ahead. Um, gosh, how to introduce myself, and I've only got five minutes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's interesting, you talked about how for most of us here, John talked about, uh, you know, we are, we are driven to do our work, we're passionate about it. When my wife and I are in bed at night, we're talking about education policy. I mean, enthusiastically, the way maybe other people talk about Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. um, we're incredibly boring to most people, but we are passionate about it. Uh, it would be great, instead of going to a conference and people saying, so who are you with? Uh, they said, so what's your purpose? Uh, my purpose, to answer your question, is to build better people, uh, which could sound very scary, and fair enough. Uh, but this, so this for me ranges from my work as a neuroscience, neuroscientist to work uh, with parents, uh, with kids, looking at entrepreneurs uh, with, again, all of my work has to do with machine learning and massive scale data, um, looking at what we might call the disenfranchised on-demand worker, as well as the sort of highly empowered um, uh, more traditional gig type thing that many of us might be thinking about. Uh, in that context, God, there's so many things uh, to be said, but to riff off the two of them, what I see in my data is that there's a lot of different populations that are making up uh, an on-demand economy or a gig economy. Uh, I, this is an aside, but I remember how passionately people talked about the on-demand economy and, and quoted, you know, Travis and others about the, the economic importance of sharing all of this stuff. And, you know, then Uber offered me a job to be their chief scientist to build self-driving cars. And you realize, wow, that was all bullshit, wasn't it? Um, as soon as you have a chance to find a cheaper way to supply your product, you were cutting out the uh, sharing economy uh, in a second. So, um, but when I look at this, I think about the human side of this, which is interesting because I look at AI, but this, the same thing plays out, which is what I see is an increasing split amongst this workforce. It's people that are already empowered, the, and we could characterize the kind of constructs, psychological constructs and others that are predictive of personal success and economic success and health success. And we see this very big shift. It played out in whatever the traditional economy is, but now we're seeing it playing out even more strongly here because the vast majority of the employees uh, or workers or whatever you want to call them, none of them surely represented here, uh, are, they don't possess these qualities. They could, they ought to, we need to own the fact that they don't, but they don't. And if you think that 80% of our workforce will just go out and become lifelong learners because it's in their best interest, you are in for disaster. Uh, if you think that they will make these long-term rational decisions about their economic futures uh, simply because they really ought to, you know, or if we give them a universal basic income, uh, that that will actually solve the fundamental human problem, which is we've written them all off already. And we're not investing them from the day they are born. And we're not investing in their parents. And it's just those of us here that have been lucky enough to win the genetic lottery and end up with families uh, that raised us into being the people we are. And yes, some of us here surely overcame uh, some amazing obstacles, but you are the outliers. Don't argue by anecdote. Uh, we're missing uh, a huge percent of the global population in this discussion. Uh, and that doesn't mean that this doesn't work for all the rest of us that are already passionate, uh, that are already well-structured uh, for this uh, economy, but we can't just go along with the magical thinking that if we give everyone um, a, a basic income, they'll all become artists and scientists. Listen, we don't pay artists and scientists shit anyway, so if they wanted to be, they'd already be. Uh, and 
if the access to information around the world, uh, you know, everyone's got the smartphone in their hands is like the differentiator, then why don't we have to beat people off with sticks to get into a library, right? This is not how we build people. But this is the big question I'm gonna leave with, which is how do we make that change so that we are? And it, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not just about throwing money at early education programs, but there is a step in that direction. Um, for example, and I'll throw this out as it close, uh, I'm involved in this company and I'm not gonna sell them here, but uh, we have a massive on-domain workforce. And my involvement in them is figuring out not what is the right match between one of their specialists and a shift, what is the right series of shifts across the time we believe they will be with us at this company that will actually lift them up and out of our workforce. We're it's a totally for-profit company, but we get more money, the higher value work that they do, uh, and as they move up, their chance of getting a long-term job uh, increases their chance of actually developing the kind of skills that are going to carry them forward increases. And this is the sort of thing we need to think about. How do we turn the work itself into the development of that person? Hmm.